Hey, what's up guys? Gons here for the Face Like the Sun YouTube channel. I got a message from Anthony Patch regarding an article that was published in the American Journal of Modern Physics. Apparent detection via new telescopes with concave lenses of otherwise invisible terrestrial entities, ITE. It was published by the Thunder Energies Corporation, Florida, USA. Ruggiero Maria Santilli is the man behind this, and here's the citation for the article. I'll read you the abstract. Here's what it says, quote, by using telescopes with concave lenses known as Santilli telescopes, trademark and patent pending by the U.S. publicly traded company Thunder Energies Corporation, we review preceding evidence for the apparent existence of antimatter galaxies, antimatter asteroids, and antimatter cosmic rays. Independently from these astrophysical detections, we present for the first time evidence for the apparent existence of entities in our terrestrial environment that are solely visible via telescopes with concave lenses, while being invisible to our eyes and to conventional Galileo telescopes with convex lenses, which entities leave dark images in the background of digital cameras attached to the Santilli telescopes. These entities are here called invisible terrestrial entities of the first kind, ITE-1 or dark ITE. We then present, also for the first time, evidence for the apparent existence in our terrestrial environment of additional entities that are also visible to telescopes via concave lenses while being invisible to our eyes and to conventional telescopes with convex lenses, which entities leave bright images in the background of digital cameras. These additional entities are here called invisible terrestrial entities of the second kind, ITE-2 or bright ITE. It is pointed out that both types of entities generally move in the night sky over sensitive areas, and their behavior generally suggests unauthorized surveillance. This paper has been motivated by the significance and diversification of the collected evidence as well as available independent confirmations that warrant systematic inspection of the sky over our sensitive civilian, industrial, and military installations via telescopes with concave lenses so as to detect possible unauthorized surveillance. So there you have it. Evidence for entities that aren't seen to the naked eye but can be seen by these telescopes with concave lenses here. I'll leave a link to the PDF in the description section so you can look at it for yourself. But there are pictures here in the article that allege the data that's being found here. Here are a couple of images that were taken of alleged ITE-1 or dark ITEs. This was taken on September 5th, 2015 in the evening sky over Tampa Bay, Florida. And interestingly enough, it says here, quote, it should be indicated that ITE-1 appear to be located mostly in the areas of terrestrial or lunar orbits. By contrast, ITE-2 are generally located directly over sensitive civilian, industrial, and military installations and appear to behave in a way strongly suggesting their unauthorized surveillance. So again, they're admitting that they seem to be looking at us or watching us somehow. And I find it interesting that these dark ITEs are mostly found in the atmosphere in lunar orbits, but then these bright ITEs are seen much closer to the surface. And I've pointed this out before, but it's worth mentioning again, Ephesians 6.12, the famous passage about how we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, powers, principalities, so forth. And one of the entities that we fight against is in the Greek, cosmocrators, or ruler of this world. And if you look at the definition that Strong's gave of cosmocrators, it says it's a ruler of this world, that is, of the world as asserting its independence of God, used of the angelic or demonic powers controlling the sublunary world, so the world between the moon and the earth. Very fascinating. And here's another interesting quote. The historical inconsistencies of negative energies have been resolved for antimatter by the underlying new mathematics specifically constructed for antimatter known as isodual mathematics with ensuing novel isoduo theory of antimatter. The above results have been confirmed by a number of independent contributions, which provides a comprehensive list of scientific papers published in referred journals and links to PR web releases in antimatter up to early 2015. It says also the detection of ITE-1 and ITE-2 has been independently verified by colleagues and was disclosed for the first time at an invited lecture delivered at the St. Petersburg Astronomy Club on September 25th, 2015. Now just a reminder, September 25th, 2015 was when the Pope was in America announcing the 2030 Sustainable Development Plan. 
But getting back to the St. Petersburg Astronomy Club here, interestingly enough, the logo has a Saturn symbol to it, and it's considered the oldest and largest astronomical organization in the southeastern United States. And so it's out there. This information is being disseminated. Now, the express.co.uk also published about this article yesterday in an article that they titled The Incredible Pictures Scientists Say Prove Invisible Alien Entities Are Here on Earth. And um, it kind of goes over Santelli and his sort of credibility or lack thereof in the scientific community. But there's a couple interesting quotes from Dr. Santilli in this article, one of them being, quote, The question of what those entities are must be answered by our government because these entities appear to be conducting unauthorized surveillance of rather sensitive civil, industrial, and military installations. Now, to those of us who've been looking at UFOs and, you know, the phenomenon for a while, we know that they've hung around nuclear facilities and they've tracked with military pilots and, and aircrafts and things like that. We've, we've known stuff like that for decades. So for him to suggest just that it's the duty of the government to figure out is kind of interesting in itself. But in conjunction with this, CNN reported, take a peek into CIA's X-Files. And this was something that's been trending. And the CNN report says, quote, the truth is out there. The CIA has released hundreds of declassified documents detailing investigations into possible alien life. The Central Intelligence Agency posted documents of reported unidentified flying objects that range in date from the late 1940s to the 1950s. While playing off the hype of the TV show reboot, The X-Files, the CIA broke down the cases into two categories, whether you side with Agent Mulder or Agent Scully. For believers in alien life and those who want to channel your inner Mulder, one case you can choose to investigate is the case of the Flying Saucer in Germany in 1952. And uh, it goes through all kinds of different cases that have been declassified. So I think what we're seeing here, obviously, is more indication that disclosure is happening slowly but surely. Add to the mix the comments made by Hillary Clinton, whether she becomes president or not. Some people think she will, some say she's not, but regardless, her comments about how she would disclose the UFO phenomenon if she became president is, of course, another one of those empty promises, perhaps. But ultimately, it might all play into this grand deception, this great disclosure that everybody wants to have. Now, Anthony Patch also made a quick video on this topic of the apparent detection via new telescopes with concave lenses of otherwise invisible terrestrial entities. And here was his message. He said, note, the Vatican operates a binocular telescope much like this new one just described here, also known as the Large Binocular Telescope. The Large Binocular Telescope and the similar but smaller version described in this paper leads one to conclude that if the smaller telescope recently is detecting these entities, then so must the larger only for a much longer time frame, perhaps several years now. Detection of and the revealing of such entities leads to one very important conclusion. Disclosure, the grand deception. Do not allow yourself to be deceived. Yes, they may in fact be detecting entities. The deception is the coming announcement from the Pope that mankind is now in contact with quote, our benevolent ancestors from the stars. There will be two types of entities announced by the Pope, just as pointed out in this paper, the good guys and the bad, and things are about to get ugly. The entities labeled good or bad, according to the Vatican, are demonic entities. Simple. Please note this once again, American Journal of Modern Physics, special issue, issue two, Foundations of Hadronic Mechanics. Notice the word hadronic, same as the large Hadron Collider of CERN. These telescopes and the Large Hadron Collider are in collusion. The Large Hadron Collider will open a large interdimensional portal, turning the key to the abyss, releasing vast quantities of these entities into our plane of existence. Adding to this, Project Bluebeam, holographic projections upon our atmosphere of alien craft. More to come. Don't be fooled. And you can check out more of Anthony Patch's work at anthonypatch.com. There are several videos and interviews that I've done with him that I'll link to as well. But this is kind of a big deal, guys. I mean, if there's any significance to this research done by Santilli, then we're talking about actual verifiable evidence that there are entities unseen in our skies and all around us. And it reminds me of Isaiah 14, 9, where it says, Sheol beneath is stirred up to meet you when you come. It rouses the shades to greet you, all who were leaders of the earth. It raises from their thrones all who were kings of the nations. And why is this significant? Well, you have Sheol, but then you have the mention of the rising of the spirits of the dead. In the King James, it stirreth up the dead for thee, 
the ESV, it rouses the shades to greet you. But if we dig into the Hebrew here, the spirit of the dead is the word Rephaim. And the Bible often talks about the land of the Rephaim or the valley of the Rephaim. And there's a definite connection between the Rephaim and the Nephilim. And you can find that in Deuteronomy 2, verse 10, 11, also verse 20 and 21, where it talks about the Rephites who were like the Anakim, the giants. And who were the Anakim? They are the descendants of the Nephilim, Numbers 13, 33. So there's a huge tie in there. And the fact that Isaiah 14 talks about this realm of the dead being stirred up and having in concert with it the rise of the kings of the earth of the nations this all looks like it plays into the beast system in the end times described in revelation 13. so more dot connections happening more stuff being pushed into the public eye preparing the minds of the masses for this grand deception is it possible that these dark entities and bright entities are nothing more than Rephaim, spirits of the dead. Thanks for watching my video. Please share it with friends, family, and whoever else you think might benefit from this information. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Face Like the Sun YouTube channel and dig around the archives. I have hundreds of videos covering topics ranging from angels, aliens, and the Antichrist to global conspiracies of the New World Order, eugenics, genetics, Genesis 6, the Nephilim, transhumanism, and much, much more. And don't forget to check out my full-length documentaries, Age of Deceit, Fallen Angels, and the New World Order, and Age of Deceit 2, Alchemy, and the Rise of the Beast Image, all of which you can watch for free right here on the Face Like the Sun YouTube channel. And if you want even more content, check out CanaryCryRadio.com, our podcast where we investigate similar issues and interview all kinds of experts on several different topics. In fact, we just finished episode 100, which is seven hours long where we interview 26 people in one podcast episode. You can find the podcast at canarycryradio.com or go subscribe to the Canary Cry Radio YouTube channel. Again, thanks for watching and have an awesome day. God bless.